So the group stages are done and now is where the fun begins. It is the knockout stages and in this video guys we're going to be going through all eight round of 16 games and I'm going to be giving you guys my prediction of who I think is going to be progressing to the quarterfinals. Let's jump into it. Okay, so let's have a look at the round of 16 draws and there are some juicy teams there, some very juicy games. Probably the biggest ones that I would say are the Belgium-Portugal game and the England-Germany game. Those are probably the highlight fixtures, but there are still some very good storylines and little bits just weaved in with all of these fixtures that will make this round of 16 very very interesting. So the first round of 16 game is Belgium versus Portugal. Portugal just can't seem to catch themselves a break. They were in the group of death with France and Germany and Hungary who actually did really really well uh, but they can't escape the big teams and they've got Belgium in this next round. This should be probably one of the most fascinating games of the round of 16. I think for Portugal I think a good thing will be having played against Germany and obviously things didn't go as well as they would have liked to but They've now got experience playing against a back three or a back five. And that's how exactly how um, Belgium play with the back three and then the two wing backs. I think the difference is obviously Belgium have that one real kind of marquee striker up front um, in Lukaku. And obviously they didn't cope against Germany. You don't really have a striker. Um, and so that could hope that would probably cause them more problems. But hopefully they've learned from that Germany game and Portugal will be in a better position to handle Belgium. And then obviously Ronaldo as well, when it gets to knockout stages, when it gets to the big games, we know he steps up. He's already stepped up with so many goals in the group stages. And I think he's only going to go strength to strength. And I think Portugal really do want to defend their title. I think people seem to forget that they are the defending champions and the pride that that, that comes with it. Um, so I think they'll do really well. Ultimately, though, I don't think they'll have enough to beat Belgium. I think we saw a bit of De Bruyne towards the end of the group stages. Lukaku's been huge. I think, obviously, Belgium's defense is where they're worse. And I talked a bit about that in the last video. But I think, um, ultimately, that, that front five or six... For Belgium will just have way too much for uh, Portugal. I think Ruben Diaz has looked okay, but nothing like what he's looked like at Manchester City. And so ultimately, I think it's going to be Belgium who progress out of this game into the quarterfinals. So the next round of 16 game is Italy versus Austria. A, probably one of the more one-sided round of 16 games. Italy, arguably the most impressive team from the group stages. They played with such fluidity, even when they made a number of changes against Wales. They still looked very assured. Uh, a player who I was very excited to see in the final game, but I'm really looking forward to seeing in the knockout stages is Chiesa. I thought he offers something a bit more than what Berardi does on that right-hand side, but I think the likes of Immobile and Signe are going to continue to score goals uh, in this game against Austria. And I think that that defence, that rock-solid defence they have with the experience of Bernucci and Chiellini will, will carry them through this game. I personally don't see Austria posing too many threats um, you know, with uh, Sabitzer and with Arnautovic. I don't really see them doing much. Um, and so I think this is going to be a, probably the most one-sided one. And I, yeah, as, as is probably not a shock to you guys, I think Italy are going to go through to the quarterfinals. So the next round of 16 game we're going to talk about is France versus Switzerland. Now, France looked not really themselves in the group stages, not the team that we've seen in the last Euros and in the last World Cup. Um, obviously coming in with a very good team, lots and lots of high expectations, many people's favourites, of course. But they just, I don't know, they didn't look themselves. I think in the Germany game, I think they got through, but that was because Germany just didn't lack that cutting edge up front. And we saw throughout the rest of the group stage that actually Germany are, are not so good or aren't playing so good at the moment anyway. Uh, and France really obviously struggled against Hungary, you know, uh, struggling to get a one all draw. And then obviously got the draw again against Portugal, two all. And they had some good moments in there. Benzema had some good moments. Pogba did, but Mbappe hasn't got off the mark yet. Griezmann has looked average. Uh, Benzema has looked okay, obviously with his two goals against Portugal. But in the other two games, he hasn't really looked clinical in front of goal. And they look a bit, look a bit ropey at the back with Varane looks a bit suspect. We obviously saw him exposed in the Hungary game and all in all they just they don't look as assured uh, as they have been for the past two tournaments but then you've got Switzerland on the other hand again who are a team similar to Austria with the likes of 
Jud and Shakiri kind of really going to be their kind of driving force. But but ultimately, I think the likes of Shakiri and Xhaka, you know, are just not going to have enough for this France team. This France team have proven for many years now that when it comes to knockout football, they can boss it and they know when to turn it up. And that's exactly what I think will happen in this game and I think will happen throughout the knockout stages. I do still see France going very far in this competition, regardless of their subpar performance in the group stages. And so, as again, like you would expect, no real surprise, but I think France are going to be proceeding out of this fixture into the quarterfinals. So the final round of 16 game on this side of the draw is Croatia versus Spain. Two teams that many before the tournament, based on their previous tournament experience, would have said, you know what, these two teams are going to perform really well and go really far. And we haven't really seen that. From a Croatia perspective, they look very toothless against England. In the rest of the group stage, they looked poor against the Czech Republic, you know, just, just getting through with a one-all draw. They obviously did better against Scotland, but I think, you know, Scotland felt like they had to go for it, which I think helped Croatia. But they haven't really got that presence up front, Croatia. Rebic played in the first two games and just did not look a threat at all. Perisic isn't the player he once was. Modric still very much carrying that team, even though he's, what, in his mid to late 30s now? Um, but then you got Spain, on the other hand, too. I've had a bit of a, I talked about this last time, but I'm in a bit of a transition period. Uh, I've talked about how I didn't like Morata starting, and now it looks like Morata starting, but Moreno is as well, which I'm a lot more excited about. I think, as I talked about before, he is a quality player, and I want to see a lot, lot more of Jair Moreno in this tournament. Obviously, in their final group game against Slovakia, when Slovakia just went a bit crazy and Dubravka was doing just weird stuff, uh, they were able to show a bit of flair, and that will definitely help their confidence going into these knockout stages. Before, in their draws against Poland and, and Sweden, they just looked a bit, I don't know, they looked a bit lethargic, they looked a little, little bit off it, but I think that uh, Slovakia game was perfect for them. It gave them that momentum, knew that they've still got it in them to, you know, get to the byline, cut the balls back. That's what they were doing for so many years in that kind of golden period where they were so good with the, with your, when Jordi Alba was down there, when kind of Nacho and Carvajal were down there with David Villa and the team and Fernando Torres. And I think they, they did that, or they showed glimpses of that against Slovakia. And I think that's why they'll, they'll do really well. And I really do think this Croatia team is very, very average. And that's why I think Spain are going to progress from this fixture. So now let's move on to the other side of the round of 16 draw. And the first fixture on that side is Sweden against Ukraine. When we've seen kind of some decent teams go home already, play, teams like Hungary who played really well, you know, Poland not going through to the knockout stages, to see Sweden and Ukraine in a round of 16 game is a little bit strange. But nevertheless, I think it will still be one of those interesting games. Sweden have grown strength from strength after they I think they got a lot of confidence from that Spain game where they were able to hold them out and they just improved on it against Poland and they improved on it against Slovakia as well Forsberg started to score now they didn't look like they necessarily had a huge goal threat against Spain but I think that's because the way they just set up against Spain but yeah, uh, Forsberg's looked decent. Isaacs just looked like getting better without really scoring. Uh, but then let's look at Ukraine, who, again, looked kind of average throughout the group stages. I think very much carried by Yarmolenko and Yuremchuk, who many people thought was going to be a player to look out for at the beginning of the Euros, and he's very much proving that. I think Zinchenko's got to get a lot more control of the midfield. I think he hasn't really been performing uh, as well as he needs to, and I definitely think Shevchenko will be looking to get Zinchenko, particularly in this game, to hold the ball and kind of control the midfield, uh, which is something that he's done for Ukraine many times before but we haven't necessarily seen him do so well but I think this will be one of the tighter ones but I do think Sweden will go through from this fixture. So now it's time to talk about the big one and that is England Germany. This is one of those games where you know everything in the world has just conspired to make this game happen. Obviously with the craziness going on in the final group game, match day three of Group F with the Hungary-Germany game and the Portugal-France game with all sorts of permutations happening as so many goals were going in. But ultimately, it is England facing Germany, which I think obviously historically is a huge game anyway. And when you add in the significance of obviously England going out in 96 with Gareth Southgate missing that penalty against Germany, the story is just written. Germany don't look like the team that they have been in previous competitions. They don't have that recognized striker they don't have a closer or someone like that Havertz has been playing that position getting some goals but he's a very different goal threat to someone like a Lukaku uh, and even on and they've been very much reliant on the wingers like Gerson's has been fantastic a player that I think many people weren't necessarily knew too much about going into the tournament but since he's been playing has just been amazing and I definitely think he will be uh, definitely scouted by many teams and possibly looking to make a move outside of Atalanta after the tournament. But it should be a very interesting game. Uh, England have been kind of slowly improving without being world beating or anything like that. And Germany have been the same kind of subpar. So both teams will have a point to prove 
in this game, which always makes it a little bit more interesting. I think England will go to a back five to match up with Germany. I think if we go to a back four, there is a very high risk that uh, we become basically Portugal. And what happened in the Portugal-Germany game was that uh, Portugal were just being overloaded by the wing backs coming in uh, and there were, essentially wasn't anyone to pick that player up which is why Gosen scored Kimmich was able to get some balls in whereas I don't think Gareth Southgate will make that mistake and will go to a back five but which inevitably means that one of those creative uh, attacking forwards and midfielders one of those is going to have to drop out and you know it possibly might be Jack Grealish you know so many people called for him to join part of the team um, but it looks like possibly, I think, if we go with the five at the back, he is probably going to be one of the players that uh, drops out. The other interesting position with, in terms of an England perspective, though, is whether Saka plays, who had a very, very good game, or whether we bring Foden back in, who's got that little bit different um, play style from Saka. Saka will take the ball and run at the defenders, whereas Foden may be a little bit more uh, protective in terms of a defensive position as well, maybe understands that defensive side of the game maybe a little better than Saka. But then you have to add in the complexity as well of someone like Mason Mount, who obviously missed a Czech Republic game, who's been in isolation, hasn't trained with the team, I think will be leaving isolation a day before the game. Um, will he be you know, ready to, to be part of the team if, if Gareth wants to put him as one of those front three? All of those different things add just even more complexity to this, to this game. But I think just based on how England have been playing, Harry Kane... Uh, looking to point, uh, prove a point, and Germany kind of not being so great. I think if we can shut out the wing backs and we can keep Havertz quiet, uh, I think England's had a very good chance. And so, call me optimistic, call me a, a, a dreamer if you want, but I do think England are going to win this game and progress through to the quarterfinals. So the next game we are going to talk about is Netherlands versus Czech Republic. Netherlands probably up there with Italy in terms of looking like one of the most promising teams throughout the group stages, but. Bear in mind, their group stage wasn't overly difficult. Uh, and so it's very easy to sometimes get drawn in and go, oh, you know, they looked amazing. Dumfries was amazing. Depay was amazing. But, you know, when you've got a team that's a lot more structured in terms of its defensive positioning and can cause them, their defense, a lot more problems as well. You know, Delit hasn't really been tested. Daily Blind hasn't been tested. We know Daily Blind is, you know, getting on a bit and isn't necessarily the defender he was a couple of years ago. Um, and we've seen Dumfries going forward, but, you know, but what's he like going backwards to his goal? You know, Van Aanholt on one side we know from the Premier League is not the best defensively. Dumfries looks similar, a player that always just wants to get forward. And so I don't think Netherlands have been really tested in this game, in this tournament so far. And I think the Czech Republic team will put up a very stern test for them. Ultimately, I don't think it will be good enough. Um, I think Netherlands will proceed. But I think Czech Republic, I think we saw against England probably more of what we expect from Czech Republic. Patrick Schick was nowhere to be seen in that game. He really struggled to get into that game. And that was mainly because England held the ball a lot more. And that's exactly what I um, expect Netherlands to be doing with Gini Wijnaldum and Frankie de Jong in that midfield. Uh, and I think it will, be the, it will be there for the likes of Socek and people like that to break up that play and give Croatia, uh, sorry, Czech Republic the ball. But I ultimately don't think that's going to work. I think gonna, the Netherlands are going to have too much for the Czech Republic. And, and yeah, as I said, they're going to progress through to the quarterfinals. And then the final round of 16 game, another home nation, Wales this time facing Denmark. And again, similar to the Sweden-Ukraine game, I actually think this one will probably be one of the more interesting games in the round of 16. When you kind of have two fairly evenly matched teams, um, that's kind of when I, when I find that the, the better matches happen. And let's take a look at Denmark first. Obviously, with the whole Christian Eriksen thing happening, I feel like they've kind of got over it now. Obviously, knowing that he's happy, you know, he's well and he's getting better and he's out of hospital is obviously a huge relief to the players and the management. Um, but it's allowed them to just play it a bit more freely. We saw that in their last group game where they won 4-1, I believe, uh, getting a bit of momentum going and obviously fairly strong at the back with players like Christensen and then Paulson doing well up front as well. Delaney in the midfield being really solid. So they've got really good spine to their team, Denmark, and we've seen that in previous competitions as well. And I think they'll, they'll put up a really tough test for Wales. But Wales, on the other hand, have done really well as well. They did well in a, in a, in a, you know, a fairly tough group um, Gareth Bales looked decent. Aaron Ramsey's looked very good. They've got good options off the bench, like Harry Wilson, to offer them maybe something slightly differently. And defensively, they've looked pretty good. They've looked okay, you know. Um, and I think Wales, you know, obviously 
riding off their success at the last Euros as well. You know, they know how to deal with knockout games now as well, which I think is huge. That experience that players like Bale will bring to these games, I think will be good. And I think Rob Page has been doing a fantastic job and I actually think he's a really, really good manager. Uh, and as I said, so I think this will be a really tough game, but ultimately I see Wales progressing. And that's just because of their experience of the knockout stages from the last tournament. And I think they'll bring some of that experience and the quality of Bale and Ramsey will ultimately show in this game. Uh, and so therefore I think Wales are going to be going through to the quarterfinals. There we have it, my predictions for the round of 16 games of Euro 2020. I'm honestly super excited to watch these games. The game, the tournament kind of is getting into its, its mojo now. The first couple of group games were kind of cagey, but we saw things open up a little bit more in the final match day. But obviously now it's knockout football. We have the opportunity of extra time penalties and with more extra time games comes more tiredness, which means more mistakes, which comes more open games. So all of that fun really starts. And this is honestly, yeah, really where the fun begins. So make sure you guys are watching all the games and make sure you subscribe here as well to don't miss my reactions and reviews of everything that's going on in the Euros. But thank you all for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next one.